Hello, welcome back. This is lesson five of the Bible, the Fallen Nation course. I'm Pastor Peter. Thank you for joining me for the first section of the lesson. There's this well-known saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. This phrase encourages us to change our ways according to where we are. It's not a bad thing to mimic the ways of the people around us so that we fit in and don't offend others. It can be helpful in some situations, but it's not wise in matters of our faith and salvation. That is, it's not good to abandon the truths of the Bible because we're in a different place or situation. Sometimes our faith in Jesus may cause others to see us as outsiders, people who don't fit in. It would not be good to set aside the Lord so we're welcomed into a group that turn their backs on God. In our previous lesson, the hard-hearted Israelites rejected God's warnings. They received God's just judgment and condemnation. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed, and the people were taken into captivity by the Babylonians. It may appear that God's people were deserted, left alone in Babylonia, a foreign land with no one to guide and care for them. Were there any people left who loved and trusted in the Lord? It's true that many Israelites had abandoned the Lord, yet by the power of the Spirit of God, some of them kept their faith in the true God. And these few believers are known as a remnant. Yes, the remnant remained from which the promised Savior would come. Some of the remnant included Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. They were friends of Belsassar, whose Jewish name was Daniel. These young men were good-looking, strong, and capable of learning. The Babylonians were preparing these men to work for King Nebuchadnezzar. As captives in a foreign land, these men were asked to do things contrary to God's will. They were fed food that was forbidden to Jewish people. The king commanded them to kneel and worship a golden statue where they'd be thrown into a fiery furnace. These believers knew they must serve God and not men. God saved Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego from the hot furnace. Even in a strange land, their faith remained strong, and they continued to follow God's ways. Our lesson begins in Babylon, the land captured by the Persians under the rule of King Darius. During the reign of King Darius, Daniel was in charge of all the officers. But some of the king's officers were jealous. They made a plan to get rid of Daniel. Now it is Daniel's turn to suffer for his faith. Let's learn the story from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, Daniel in the Den of Lions. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, We will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, 
issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about this royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, The decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed, and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Once again, we witness God's protection for his people. He gave Daniel the strength to not worship false gods in spite of the punishments. Daniel trusted that God would deliver him from evil. God sent his angels to miraculously protect Daniel from the lions. We live in a world where the number of believers may be fewer than the number of unbelievers. We may be tempted to put aside our faith to avoid being made fun of or even persecuted. Remember, God has the same blessing and protection for us as He did for Daniel. He will deliver us from evil. Either He will remove the danger from our lives, as He did for Daniel in the lion's den, 
or God will take us home to be with Him in heaven. In both situations, we are blessed. God will be at our side always. He will bless and preserve us, not by anything that we do, but by God's pure grace. Even if we have to suffer, He is our loving God. He will never fail us. Treasure God's prayer for you and promise to you. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. The Bible, the fallen nation course, is nearing its end. I recommend that you make a plan for your final project. Please join the live online class for this lesson, and may God bless you richly in Christ Jesus. I'm Pastor Peter. Thank you for joining me.